Perhaps the most serious concern I had was when Dr. Claudi in the first segment of Class 5 spent a considerable amount of time casting doubts on the reliability of traditional Islamic scholars and accused them of sanitizing, coloring, romanticizing, etc. history. Dr. Claudi also told his students that as a result of his research, he has many findings which he would not share with them because it's not safe to do so. He also said that he draws red lines, which he personally does not cross in order to preserve his own orthodoxy. Footnote says, according to Dr. Qadi, he basically takes off his academic and critical hat and brings in Islamic theology to make sense of problematic historical events. This would not have been a problem if Dr. Qadi was not so selective and arbitrary when he decides when to behave like a traditional Muslim and Western-influenced skeptic. I found this all to be completely unacceptable. Dr. Claudi literally exposed his students to intellectual doubts and even told them that he possessed dangerous findings that he would not share with them. He also carelessly undermined the only credible source that could possibly address these doubts, namely Orthodox Islamic scholarship itself. Then he thinks he can make things right by expressing how he, selectively and subjectively, draws orthodox red lines for himself, even when there is no convincing reason left for people to emulate him in his red line drawing. I found this to be utterly careless and irresponsible on Dr. Claudi's part. In summary, I found this to be the course's biggest blight, and this reason alone suffices for me to strongly discourage others from registering for it if Dr. Claudi intends to repeat what he did. So in conclusion, he lists some ways that Dr. Claudi basically fell short in making this a successful course. He says, Dr. Qadi's dereliction by neglecting to cultivate in his students a stronger sense of pride and confidence in their own Islamic scholarly tradition. In fact, Dr. Qadi has done the exact opposite by casting doubts on the general credibility of traditional Islamic scholarship. There was also a lack of sufficient reverence shown towards prominent scholars in our tradition, which only served to diminish their deserved status. Dr. Qadi's failure to intellectually equip the students sufficiently to the point whereby they are capable of safeguarding their orthodox beliefs from intellectual attacks. He would encourage his students to embrace a particular critical methodology and then expose them to arguments which he at times does not provide them with the resources and intellectual arsenal required to overcome. At a certain point, he would capriciously stop being critical and tell his students that he arbitrarily draws a red line for himself in order not to cross the bounds of orthodox Yet, if one were to actually listen to him and become critical in the manner he prods him to be, he would technically have no reason to agree with Dr. Qadi's non-evidentially backed and ad hoc conclusions on several matters. In light of this, we hope Dr. Qadi and others could reflect on and benefit from what has been mentioned in this article and that it motivates them to be warier of the dangers of negligently navigating between traditional and Western academic Islamic scholarship. May Allah guide all of us. May Allah forgive us. May Allah protect us from doubts. May Allah bless us with the common sense to learn our tradition from scholars of our tradition.